Our international border with Mexico crosses some of the most biologically rich lands in the world, spanning countless mountain ranges, two of North America's four deserts, and major river ecosystems. Some of the plant and animal species found here are found nowhere else on Earth. These areas provide important habitat for rare and threatened animals and plants. But these vital wild places are under assault by a border policy that operates above the law. The proposed border wall will not stop human migration, but instead does unnecessary and serious harm to precious natural areas. In California, the U.S.-Mexico border draws a line south of San Diego on the boundary of the Tijuana Estuary, a fragile and remarkable ecosystem that supports life at land and sea. It's the last uh, big saltwater marsh that's intact that's left in Southern California. In Arizona and New Mexico, the borderline bisects an area known as the Sky Island region. This area hosts some of the northernmost ranges of tropical species from the south, and it also hosts some of the southernmost ranges of some of the northern species. There's a wide array of mammals in the region. It makes this region very rich. Texas can boast the most miles of binational habitats, ranging from the mountains near El Paso to an interconnected network of wildlife refuges along the river. You have an enormous diversity of species, uh, particularly bird, but also including you know, mammals and reptiles and everything else. All of this diversity that exists down here is really confined to very small patches of habitat. And really the, the river is what links all of these together and makes these scattered bits of habitat viable. Sadly, the biological significance of these lands and the environmental laws that protect them are being ignored by current U.S. border policy. Wildlife, migrations, cross-border flow of all of these natural systems will be disturbed, but people will go over, around, under the wall. Border Patrol says over and over again that uh, it only slows somebody down by five minutes. So we're going to spend billions of dollars to slow somebody down for five minutes. It's not going to stop the immigration problem. It's going to move it to another area. So has it really solved anything other than significantly impacting the resources in our county? That's, that's the question. What this barrier will accomplish will be to cut this very rich region in two, to block all corridors and wildlife passages there's also the concern that there will be a lot of clearance of uh, vegetation to give them a clear line of sight from the wall to the river. Uh, in some places, the wall is as much as a mile away from the river, and, and you know, there's a lot of concern about what will happen to the backside of that. The federal government is able to construct the border wall without taking ecological issues into consideration because in 2005, the Real ID Act was signed into law. The Real ID Act gives the Secretary of Homeland Security the power to waive all local, state, and federal laws. In April 2008, the Secretary of the Department of Homeland Security issued a waiver that swept aside more than 30 important laws created to protect clean water, clean air, wildlife habitat, important historical sites, and specific wilderness areas. Every environmental law that this country has built up um, since the, the mid-1960s, in a heartbeat, can just be dismissed. This border wall is not the solution. It will not stop people from coming. It hasn't. Uh, however, its effects on many other uh, aspects of this region will be devastating. It's necessary to address concerns with national security. We just think that uh, it can be done in a more environmentally sensitive manner. For a hundred years, the Sierra Club has worked to protect wild places. Current border policy is undermining many of the laws that protect land and wildlife. This is more than an issue about the health of a region's ecosystems. 
It's about protecting our democracy and putting an end to the unprecedented and unwarranted powers given the Secretary of Homeland Security. Call your congressional representative and senators today and tell them to repeal Section 102 of the Real ID Act. But we better rearrange our priorities pretty fast or we're going to have some real problems.